When you think about NBA bromances, you usually think of like Kyle Lowry, DeMar DeRozan. You think about Klay Thompson and Stephen Curry. Not many people think about a player and a front office guy. But for the last decade, James Harden and Daryl Morey was like this. And this week, all of that changed, man. All of that changed. And it's, it's kind of sad that we got to this point. I know I'm late to the party talking about this. I was on my honeymoon with all of this broke. I'm finally home like I just landed and got home 30 minutes ago. The brother is back on the grind. So I'm late, but but I'll make it worth it. I mean, maybe. I, I don't. I, I don't. James Harden um, is over in China, um, and he said this a couple days ago. Daryl Morey is a liar, and I will never be a part of an organization <laughs> that he's a part of. Let me say that again. This is this is crazy. Brother said, hey, just in case you didn't hear me clearly the first time, let me say that again. Daryl Morey is a liar and I will never be a part of an organization that he's a part of. And when this broke, I swear I thought it was not real. But of course, that is from Shams. That is a real video, not an AI generated video. James Harden actually said that even though his agent, I guess, told, advised him against it. Um, he had to do what he had to do. And again, when I go back and talk about that bromance between Daryl Morey and James Harden, you have to remember exactly what I'm talking about. It's factual that James Harden is a better scorer than Michael Jordan. This is from Daryl Morey himself. There's been a lot of comments similar to this. There's been a lot of finagling from James Harden's part to get to a team that Daryl Morey was in charge of. And just like that, it is broken. All of the trust is broken between the two. And now, James Harden is kind of in limbo trying to figure out where the heck am I going to be playing? Because James opted into his contract with the idea that he was going to be traded. But Daryl Morey said, hey, I'm not making no trade that won't make us better. So I want to start Kyle player back plus draft capital. And again, Daryl, there, there's no leverage, so that, that trade package is not going to happen. So what is going to happen? I think in all of this, it's easy to pick sides. Are you basically Team 76 of front office, or are you Team James Harden? And for y'all that are completely out of the loop, why did this bromance end? Why is he saying this? Well, he was promised some things, allegedly, let's say allegedly. He was allegedly promised some things from Daryl Morey's last the 76ers front office, and they have not fulfilled those promises. If you remember last offseason... Uh, one of the big things of the offseason was James Harden took a pretty decent pay cut with the idea that, hey, a little under the table action, we, you take that pay cut right now, and we promise you next season we're going to pay you, but we need to do what we could do to win a championship. So you take your pay cut, and that's going to allow us to bring in Daniel House Jr., and that's going to allow us to bring in P.J. Tucker and James. Like, cool, wait, you say you're going to give me that money next season? All right, I still got my shoe endorsement. I got my liquor. I got all of this stuff. I can afford to lose about $15 million right now. Just you, you promising me that next season is going to be there, right? Right? Okay, cool. And, of course, James put together a really good season. I mean, he averaged, was it 20 and 10? I know he led the league in, in assisting. Yeah, 21 and about 11. Uh, he had a good season. Obviously, in the playoffs, he had the two 40-point games. And in every game around that, not so great. But just, just saying that James Harden had a successful individual season, especially when he comes to the regular season. Yet, the thing that he was promised, allegedly, is not on the table. This is, this is how a lot of people assume that it went down. He was promised this money, whatever the number was. Was it a max? Was it close to it? Whatever. Daryl slash the 76 in front of us said, oh, I'm sorry. I know we promised you that last season. We can't really do that. But what we can do is have you opt into your contract. And you know what? If you disgruntle, we can trade your way. James is like, oh, man, I, I guess... I guess that's fine. It's not a lot of money out there on the market right now. There's not a lot of teams with money to give me a near max. So I guess I'll opt into this contract. But you're promising me you're going to trade me to like the Clippers. Or you're going to trade me to another one of the teams that I'm really uh, interested in. And they're like, cool. Not a problem. We're going we to make sure we do that for you. A couple weeks go by. A couple months go by. And now the 76ers are saying they're cool with having James Harden report to training camp. And James said, no, no, no. I refuse. I refuse to do that. And that's where things get really, really tricky. Obviously, the 76ers just went through something like this a few years ago with Ben Simmons, where Ben Simmons did not run to report, but he did report for that one practice. His phone's in his pocket, allegedly. I'm going to keep saying allegedly because I, I guess he said it wasn't, but like, what else with that? Oh, man. Reported, it didn't go well, and then he was traded shortly after that, a, a little while after that. But the new CBA has something in it. That if James does a report or he doesn't play, I think that he gets like a 30-day grace period or something along those lines. His contract doesn't just expire. Like, he opted into his contract in his mind, okay, worst case scenario, we play out the season next year, I'm a free agent. Not only am I a free agent, next year's free agency class is not that good. It's like Pascal Siakam, it's Klay Thompson, and it's like me. Those are the all-star caliber players, at least as of right now, that are that are unrestricted. So, you know what? I might not be able to get that back this season. I get it next season. I'll just sit out with it. I might go play in China because I guess that's a rumor that he's interested in playing in China. No, under the new CBA, if he does not report 
And the 76ers want to report he's not out of his contract when that year is done. That contract goes over. So he will not be a 2024 free agent if he does report. And that's where things get messy. James Harden's last couple years, it's, it's hard to internalize when you think about it. From my understanding, he was not represented by anybody other than himself, at least until the last couple months. And here are some of the numbers that he turned down over the last couple seasons when he did not have an agent. The Rockets offered him a two-year, $103 million extension. He said, no, I'm good on that. I'd rather go play with some other team. Then he ended up with that other team, the Brooklyn Nets, and they offered him a three-year, $61 million, three years, $161 million contract. And he said, no, nah, I'm not really into that. I would rather you trade me away because this Kyrie KD thing in Brooklyn ain't really it. Then he gets there. And he's eligible for a four-year, $227 million contract. But again, he was convinced to take a pay cut. So think about all that money that was left on the table if you're the Harden family. And now you're telling me to opt in again and I can't get no money. See, I can understand his frustration. I also talk about this uh, more in depth on my podcast. Uh, it's the Kenny Beachum podcast. You can look it up on Spotify, on Apple, or whatever, whatever. Because these YouTube videos is only for 10 to 15 minutes. You're going to hear an hour talk. Not just this, other basketball-related stuff. You know where to find it. So now the question is, what happens next? Daryl Morey is a guy that has, over the years, as a general manager, basketball operations, hey, whatever, whatever, he strived with just crazy scenarios. He did not give in to the Ben Simmons thing, and he held out on Ben Simmons until he got an all-star caliber player back in James Harden. Now, I don't think that still is out there um, for James, to, for him to try to replicate that. Oh, we traded Ben Simmons, who hadn't played for James Harden. I don't think you can trade James Harden for something, you know, a, another all-star. So if that's not the case, the, the Norman Powell slash Terrence Mann, who they don't even want to throw Terrence Mann in. And so this Clippers package might be even worse because where do you hold leverage if you're Philly? Like, yeah, James Harden's really, really good, but that doesn't matter. He wants out. You're kind of, you're not forced to, but you're close to forced to trade him. Why would I, as an opposing general manager, give you some of my best pieces when in reality, James is saying he don't want to play for you anyway. There's no leverage if you're the 76ers in these trade talks. You might want Terrence Mann. Ah, uh, we don't want to get you them. And you don't have any other suitors, so what are you going to do? But the bigger picture of all of this is, is well beyond Daryl Morey. It's well beyond James Harden. It's about the reigning MVP of the league, Joel Embiid. The man took the processing slash Philadelphia out of his bio. I don't be looking too much into that. I think the timing is very interesting, but I don't think too much into that. But I can understand his frustrations. Uh, uh, like, think about the timetable of Joel Embiid as he's hit stardom, right? You build a, I think the best team you've built around Joel B was the Jimmy Butler, J.J. Redick, Ben Simmons years, um, our year. I think it was just one. And of course, um, Kawhi Leonard hit one of the craziest shots in the history of this sport. And that just ends. Jimmy Butler goes another direction, yada, yada, yada. Tobias Harris over me. You remember that? Even then, okay, you lose Jimmy Butler, but you still have a really competent roster with Ben Simmons and stuff. Like, yeah, we wanted to see a little bit more pick and roll between Joel and Ben Simmons over those years, but it, it never really happened. Then that thing happens where Ben Simmons is passing out of a layup or with Trey Young guarding him, and then the whole fiasco with him happened, and now you have James. Like, there has been a lot of superstar, not superstar, a lot of all-star level turnaround with the 76ers over these years, and Joel and B might be like, man, I'm fed up. Like, I know personally, I have not been the best version of myself come playoff time, but man, I haven't really had that much consistency around me. And now you're saying we might be trading James Harden away for, I don't want to say scraps, but not a player of his caliber? That doesn't really interest me too much. I'm 30 years old with injury history. <laughs> I don't know how many great years I got in these legs anymore. So could we be going down the path of Joel B being the next superstar player to say, hey, I've had enough. Now, he, he's alluded to this kind of in a way. Like I said this before, 76 of fans, they want to trade me. I, I, again, this was, what, a year ago? Oh, this was the last season. 76 fans don't really think this way, but he just wanted to say it, I guess? And then Jake Fisher said, hey, you believe that? He said, I do believe that. They want to trade me. When in reality, um, he, yes, he could be trolling, but whatever. We don't know exactly, obviously, uh, the conversations that were said between James and Daryl. But if it is that he was promised a certain thing and he wasn't given that promise... I understand the frustration behind all of it, honestly. One person that's just sitting back like, dang, 
I really messed up. Might be, might be Nick Nurse. <laughs> Nick Nurse took this coach a job with the idea that he was going to have a really good team around uh, Joel Embiid. And that just might not be the case. And you're like, man, I left those dudes in Toronto. Not saying that Toronto's team is much better or any better. But, like, man, there was a lot of good coaching jobs on the market this year. And Nick Nurse was one of the, the highly touted dudes. And he ended up in, in Philly. And now he don't even know if he going to have James next season. And he don't even know if he going to have Joel Embiid in two seasons. Like, this is, is a rough spot if you hear him. But there's, there's a conversation to be had about player empowerment versus the business side of basketball. And this is a prime example of both because Daryl might be saying, hey, I don't want to give James that money because we think we can spend money other places and make our team better. Now, player empowerment is like, hey, you don't want to give me that, so I'm just going to say deuces. And not only do I want to say deuces, I have a short list of teams I want you to trade me to. That's the, that's the second time James has done this, you know? This is when he requested his trade to Brooklyn. I remember uh, he did the post-game interview. He said, I gave them a list of teams and it was only one team and it was the Brooklyn Nets. And then he got traded from the Brooklyn Nets to the 76ers and he said, I gave them a list of teams. And he, <laughs> the only team on my list was the 76ers. So uh, I don't know what's going on with James, but, um, you know, because of all of this going on, the Damian Lillard talks have kind of died down. This is more prevalent because there are real world implications across the association that are deeper, deeper than just James when it comes to holding out a training camp and stuff. So um, we'll, we'll see who's playing chicken. We see, we'll see who's bluffing and we'll see what James is up playing next season.